What's up everyone? Greg here at Peterson Farm. Um, it's been a while since we last uploaded a video. Uh, you probably saw uh, Some Cows was our last upload here on our Peterson Farm Bros channel. And Some Cows was a parody of uh, Some Girls. And we put that out in the spring, or maybe it was the early summer. The reason why we haven't uploaded very much is because most of our uploads are going on our other YouTube channel, uh, Peterson Family Farm. If you guys have not subscribed to Peter Peterson Family Farm, and you would like to watch videos of us working uh, here on our farm, the day-to-day -day, uh, vlog type videos, that is where all of those uploads are going now. Uh, we still plan on uploading to this channel several times a year uh, with entertaining music videos or, or uh, kind of different type of content than those vlogs. Um, today, we're going to give you guys a farm tour and also kind of give you guys a little update about what's been going on. So the first update is that most of our videos um, are going to Peterson Family Farm and you should go check that channel out if you haven't. The second update of the summer is that it's been very hot and very dry for the last month or so. So if you noticed behind me the, the grass is dying and um, it's been kind of a rough summer. The last summer we had that was this rough uh, was 2012 when our, our first video came out and that kind of helped uh, distract us uh, from how hard that summer was with drought and little rain. Uh, this year in 2021, what's helped distract us is that we've uh, been adding to our family. Um, Nathan and his wife Riley had a baby in February. Kendall and his wife Kaylin had a baby last August and, and uh, Blair is uh, growing up and, and starting to become more of a toddler now, which is really fun. And then my wife, Brookanna and I, um, we are having a baby here in a month and a half. We're doing mid-September, so um, pretty exciting times. Uh, from that um, aspect. And our sister, Laura, actually just got engaged last night. So um, all four Peterson siblings um, having some really exciting news in our lives. Um, but as far as the farm goes, um, it was a really busy spring. We got the crops in, um, had a really good wheat harvest. Um, it was above average. And then um, about half of our farm has received rain since we planted the double crop after wheat harvest. And then, and then this half, um, has not received really any rain since then. So we're praying for rain. Third update is that uh, we are releasing a new parody, hopefully very soon, a uh, parody of Ghostbusters called Crop Dusters. And uh, should be a lot of fun. Everybody, everybody knows and loves that song, right? All right, so to start the farm tour, we haven't always shown our, our shop, our barn area in the past because um, it's, it's not, maybe not where we want it to be. We're, we're hoping to build a, a new shop at some point, um, but we're just kind of getting by with this and it works. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of other farms out there that have old shops and, and do most of their work outside. Most of the time we pull over our equipment out in front of the shop here and work on it outside. Um, Kansas usually, you know, there's enough nice days and, and uh, the winter and, and the different seasons where we can work on stuff outside. Nathan is working on the uh, forage harvester right now. Is it going all right? Yep. Listening to some Ghost Runners podcast. Yep. Shout out. So Ghost Runners uh, podcast, which you can find on Spotify, Apple Music. Um, that's my college roommate, Brad. One of the guys I roomed with in college. He has a podcast now. Has several thousand listeners, and, and they're pretty funny. Him and his friend Jake. So I wanted to give them a shout out, but... Uh, so you uh, you working on the, the forge harvester? Yep, I'm putting in some new knives and getting it ready to chop corn. So as any uh, any old farm shop goes, there's a lot of a lot of stuff in here, and uh, we've saved a lot of things over the years, and uh, it's more organized than it looked. So other than uh, changing out the knives on the chopper, another thing we're going to have to do is uh, do an oil change, and we'll put some of this uh, Shell uh, Rotella heavy duty engine oil. Um, in the chopper, uh, we'll take these filters off, we'll drain the oil, we'll put some new filters back on, and then we'll top it off with the shell repair. Would you quit interrupting me? Sorry, it's too loud. <laughs> no, it's fine. If it's a, if it's it's a farm a tour, life. if it's the farm tour of the shop, you gotta have the real sound effects. Uh, but the reason we like uh, Shell Rotella heavy duty engine oil is because it gives us better wear protection, um, it helps operate in extreme temperatures, which uh, a lot of times we'll be chopping corn uh, in 100 plus degree temperatures. It's not a, a brand new chopper by any means, and so uh, it's important to take really good care of it. 
And so putting high quality engine oil is definitely one of the ways um, that we can do that. And uh, it goes, that oil goes longer between um, oil changes uh, to where um, we don't have to change oil as often. And it also gives us better fuel economy. And anybody who knows uh, forage harvesters, forage shoppers, um, they can burn a lot of fuel. Our shop is definitely one of the most um, important places on our farm. It's probably where we spend the most time. Um, and yeah, we do hope to update it um, very soon. Um, but as you probably know, um, building a new shop is very expensive, especially in these times where everything costs more than it used to. And uh, so we're trying to, to make wise financial choices. At the same time, our, our farm has grown quite a bit in the last couple of years. And so it's time to, to be making some upgrades there. All right, so the shop is the oldest building on the farm. This, this barn is over a hundred years old. And um, by the barn, we've got a few outbuildings here. Uh, this actually used to be a chicken coop. Um, that's how our farm made it through the Great Depression was um, selling eggs. Um, we had a whole bunch of chickens back in the day. And uh, this is actually where uh, Kendall and Kaylin live in this house here. And this uh, home place is where Kendall and Kaylin live is uh, where our grandparents live. So growing up, uh, we would come up here um, to visit our grandparents. And this was, this was the home farm where our grandparents lived. So we grew up three, four miles away from the home farm. Um, and this is a fifth generation family farm. So we're the uh, fifth generation to farm here. And then our kids will be the, the sixth generation. Um, a little bit of history on the, the place here. Um, it was settled in 1882 when our um, great, great grandparents came over from Sweden and settled here. We've always had cattle um, and we have historically raised winter wheat. Um, that was kind of the, the most durable crop back in the day. But as uh, things have changed over the years, we um, switched to no-till in the 90s and we started rotating between four or five different crops. And so we grow a lot more beans and corn and milo and some other forages now as well. So, so from the, the barn and the outbuildings over there and Kendall's house, uh, we're going over here to the main uh, machine shed and uh, this is where we store all of, all of our equipment. We've got our tractors in here. We got the Kubota Sidekick, the Great Plains Air Seeder, and some of our harvesting equipment. All right, as we come out of the uh, machine shed, we've got our uh, one of our uh, grain bins over here that we put seed wheat in. And then we, we sometimes park some things over here. Um, we need to take this tree out. It just died this this spring, it didn't always look that sad. Uh, and then we have bale storage. Um, we like to keep in some different spots on our farm just to avoid a, a fire starting and, and burning all the hay we have or um, you know a fire starting and being too close to the house or the sheds. And so we try to kind of disperse our bales a little bit. Um, we also have some, some we park some different equipment out here uh, on the south side of our farm. Um, if we were to build a new shop, it would probably be in this area um, to the south of this other building, or we would um, convert our convert our current machine shed into our shop. So those are kind of our two options. Over here, we've got some more uh, equipment storage. We built this shed, um, I think when I was in high school or so, or we had somebody build it. We didn't build it ourselves, but we did use some uh, recycled materials there. You can kind of tell, um, but I did paint it. I was the one who did this all this painting um, and then we've got uh, our grain cart parked there the Unverfirth grain cart and of course the Sioux Steel grain bin uh, both of these were uh, new additions in this past year the grain cart and the uh, Sioux Steel grain bin um, back here uh, it's kind of torn up right now but we uh, can take corn out of the the grain bin and we actually run it uh, into that hole of the commodity shed and uh, we roll corn out of the grain bin and then it goes straight into the commodity shed to to be fed you'll notice we don't have a ton of trees on our farm uh, it's really hard to get trees to grow here um, at my house uh, over in the valley it's a lot easier to get trees to grow it's the soil up here isn't as good and on in the hills and then the the wind blows like crazy it's really hard to get trees to grow because of the wind that blows up here and then of course it gets so dry in the summer um, and so hot so this used to all be one shed that was all the same height uh, and a, a huge windstorm actually took like half of the shed and, and blew it out in the field uh, same thing happened to the top of our silo 
that same storm. It looked like a tornado hit our farm, and sometimes we think a tornado did hit our farm, but um, we replaced that shed with a taller shed. This is what we call our commodity shed. So we store our different feed ingredients um, in that shed. And we've got our bunker silos where we put our, our corn silage here and uh, maybe some oat silage or some cane silage in the other trench over there. And uh, a lot of times we'll put our, our distillers uh, in that pit over there. And then this is our working facilities where we, we uh, take in cattle here and uh, we'll work the cattle, sort the cattle with these, these pins. And then this is our uh, new AeroQuip chute that we have. Uh, this is where we do a lot of our cattle work right here. So this shed back here is called our hay shed and our grandpa built that um, way back in probably the, I don't even know, the 50s, 60s probably. Um, and you can't tell on the video, but it, it's actually built on a, on a diagonal, on a slant, it goes downhill. And it's kind of unique engineering to build a building on a slant versus doing the dirt work to get it up um, even. And so uh, it's kind of a unique building. It used to, this used to be full of square bales. We used to square bale all of our alfalfa. And I remember as a kid stacking the square bales by hand in this shed. And that's why it's called the hay shed. Um, anymore, we, we pretty much uh, let cattle in there uh, for shade and shelter. Um, so that's mainly what it's used for now. We'll park equipment under there sometimes. Um, we don't put uh, much hay in there anymore uh, with, with our round bales instead of square bales. Here in Kansas with the climate, you can actually just store those round bales outside and uh, you don't have too much loss on them. So um, we, it's also kind of hard to get back to. Um, pretty much all of our, our hay operations um, went the way of, of efficiency. Square, square baling was very time consuming and a lot of handling and um, you couldn't really do it on a mass scale. And as we fed more and more cattle, we went away from square bales and went to round bales. All right, so here's where we just came from. This is kind of the old feeding headquarters for our farm. We used to fill both of these silos with silage and then we had all this this system to load the feed mixers here. So we don't ever load feed mixers here anymore. Um, we kind of graduated to these bunker silos which have much higher capacity and it's much quicker to load and unload out of these bunkers compared to these silos. These were kind of a big hassle. Um, probably had better storage quality in the silos, but um, also we once we lost the top off of that, it's not really good for anything anymore and should probably come down. So um, these were built in the 70s, I think, and uh, didn't get used for probably more than 20 years. So it's kind of sad, but progress can uh, render things useless. So um, from here, you can see um, all of our cattle pens. Uh, we got pen, um, well, over here, we've got pen three. We got pen one and two over there. We've got pen uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's um, all of our cattle pens. Uh, and, and of the ten pens, I think at least four of them can be split in half. So technically, we probably have like 15 or so pens. And uh, we can feed up to a thousand head at this feed lot. And then we can feed uh, like 400 or so head at my mom and dad's. So this is the shed kind of underneath the silo. Uh, we don't really use this for much anymore. Um, we'll park like the old manure spreader in here and like there's the old blower that blew the silage up into the silos. That probably hasn't moved for 20 years. Um, but we parked the feed the feed mixer in here. It's, it's probably the, the only thing that really gets parked in here. I don't know if you guys can see much. This is what the old silos looked like. That's the... Uh, that's the apparatus that used to go around and loosen the silage, or maybe it would spread the silage out. I, that was kind of before my time. Uh, right by the silo here, we've got a, a hydrant. We've got all of our chemical storage and uh, kind of what we used to spray. So everything past the hay shed is, is just cattle pens. And so, um, you can kind of see what those look like. Over here we have some more uh, bale storage. 
down by the pond there. You can see the sun reflecting off the pond. That's one of our irrigation ponds there. And then our lagoon over here is, is dry. Now we pumped it out uh, for irrigation, um, but it drains the entire feedlot. And uh, we pump that out uh, onto a pivot. And then this is our largest irrigation pond here. Um, and it, it gets pumped out onto that pivot up on the hill there. So we have um, two irrigation pivots that pump out three ponds. And uh, our grandpa came up with that system uh, way back when uh, to capture water here and, and irrigate and also water the cattle. We actually don't have any underground water at this farm. And so we don't have a well or anything. Um, the house is on water district water, which is um, um, water that's being pumped to all the, the rural houses out here because there's no wells. But we water our cattle and we irrigate out of these ponds. All right, well, that's an overview of our farm from the ground. Uh, now I'm gonna fly you guys up in the air and you'll get to see all these buildings that I've talked about um, from a bird's eye perspective from the drone. And I'll also try to put some labels on there so uh, you can see what I was talking about. And then after the drone video, I'm going to go fly the drone over my parents' place as well as my house. Um, so you can see, and Nathan's house, I guess. Hope you guys enjoyed watching this video, learn a little bit about our farm. You can actually come tour our farm. We do offer an option. Um, you can come tour our farm. Uh, it's a cost of $75 for any size group. Um, the only reason we charge uh, for tours is because we're super busy. We're kind of not your normal farmstead. Um, also, we have a whole bunch of people who want to come tour our farm. So um, if we didn't charge, all we would be doing is giving farm tours for free every day and, and that doesn't really doesn't really work on a farmer's schedule so uh, but we do offer tours um, you can come um, do an hour-long tour uh, meet the Peterson Farm Bros here at our farm so you can check that out on our website petersonfarmbrothers.com uh, but I hope you guys enjoy the video hope you uh, leave me a comment if you have any questions our farm definitely isn't the uh, the nicest farm we know that uh, just like we don't have the nicest equipment you guys probably remember that video from last year we don't have the nicest equipment we probably don't have the nicest farm either and uh, that's that's okay it's okay not to have the fanciest stuff not not every farm is the same there's a lot of vari variables that each farm faces and so i hope you guys see our farm for what it is it's a functioning family farm it supports four families and uh, we're working on making it better every day we're all 
different. We're all operating under different variables and um, it's okay to have used equipment and used buildings. Our farm has um, endured for almost 150 years at this point. So we must be doing something right.